So, today's practice, I'm just going to um, reflect on something that was very said by one of uh, the leading, leading Western teachers in Western yoga. His name is BKS Iyengar. And he said that the study of asana is not about mastering posture. It's about using posture to understand yourself. So what I invite you to do that yoga is, yes, yoga is physical and it does help us, but it's not just about the stretching. And I think all of you re have recognized that. And what I just you know, invite you to th do is asana is the Sanskrit word for posture or for pose. And um, just really today, as we move into our practice, think about, you know, that with every breath that you take, you're exchanging trillions of atoms with the universe. So we're, we're, we're all connected. And think and feel about this connection that we have that, and then on a physical level with each yoga position that we take, um, you, you're working your muscles, certain muscles, some certain muscles will contract and uh, that's called the agonistic muscle. And then other muscles will relax and lengthen, right? So there's always an opposition going on and that's called the antagonistic muscle. So as we move into our bodies, I just really want you to bring yourself into this connection um, of, of each pose and then feel that, you know, with each breath that we take, we're circulating and we're increasing and decreasing circulation with each move. As you start to shift your attention to intention, that's where the energy flows. So when you bring your focus and your mind into something, that energy is going to follow. So if your mind is all over the place, that's exactly what's happening. But as you start to bring your in attention and intention to something very specific, then that energy is really going to connect. So let's see how we can work with that today in our practice. Um, getting all those subtle energies mobilized and then um, see how in the end, how it might affect you increasing your level of relaxation, maybe how, how to deal with your stress and how it can help anxiety. It really has a lot to do with, our, you know, affecting our mental and our emotional uh, as well. So we're going to do today what I call a mandala and a mandala is uh, in, is also working. We're going to work around the four corners of our mat. So uh, we'll be working from the, we'll, I want you to at least know in your mind what your front of your mat is, where the back of your mat is, where the one long side is, and where the other long side is. And we're going to work. I call this practice flip it and reverse it. It's a mind, it's a mind challenger for me. And you'll have to keep me honest because if I forget something, uh, you, I won't be able to hear you <laughs> if you tell me I forget something, but I'm going to take it nice and slow. We're going to move really into the felt sensations in our body. And then whatever we do in one direction, then we're going to flip it. So this really is good for focus and really getting yourself really into that felt sensation. So let's begin again in that seated position. Get your hands on your knees or your thighs. Let's sit up nice and tall. Bring your shoulders forward and up as you inhale through the nose. Exhale audibly out through your mouth and bring your shoulders back and down with a sigh. Let's do that two more times. Bring your shoulders forward and up with an inhale and then bring them back and down on an exhale. And then one more time, bring your shoulders forward and up on an inhale and bring them back and down on an exhale. As you allow your shoulders to release down your back, lengthen up through your spine, Feel the ground that you're sitting on, on your sit bones. Feel your ankles and your shins really grounding down as you lift up nice and tall. Create that length in your spine. And then just take a moment here in this asana. This is called sukhasana, called easy pose. In this easy pose, feel what is at ease in your body. And notice what is in dis-ease. And if you feel you need to make a physical adjustment, go right ahead. Whatever you need to 
to adjust so that you can be a little bit more at ease in Supasana. Bring your attention now to your thoughts and see if you can just allow yourself, now you've made this hour to be present for yourself in this practice, I just invite you to stay with yourself in this practice. Try not to let the distractions take you away. As you set an intention for yourself, what is it that you need to receive from this practice today? Whether it's on a physical level, a healing of any sort, emotionally or spiritually, what is it that you need to receive? And make that intention in your heart for yourself in this moment. then just guide your awareness to the felt sensation of your breath right now. Notice where your breath is in your body. Without shaping it, without forming it, just notice your breath in and your breath out. And now I'm going to invite you to now to create a nice long Deep inhale, we breathe deep into the bowl of your belly and feel an expansion in the belly. And a long, slow exhale. With that exhale, I want you to gather tone in the core, gently draw that navel center in with a little gentle squeeze as you exhale. And then the inhale is full. Breathe into the bowl of the belly, to the sides of your waist, all the way up to the top. And then exhale all the way out with a little squeeze. Start to add a little movement with the spine so that when you inhale, you fill your belly, lift up through your sternum, open up your heart, and maybe even lift your gaze. And then on your exhale, you're going to round. As you round, tuck your chin and round your back. Exhale out. Again, inhale, lift. Lift your heart, lift your sternum, open up. And exhale, round. One more time. Inhale, lift. Open up your heart. And the next time when you exhale, round. Just keep your chin into your sternum and nod your head no from side to side. As you're doing that, relax the muscles in the back of your neck. And then inhale, lift up your chin, look up towards the ceiling or up at the sky for those of you outdoors. And then as you exhale, bring your right ear to your right shoulder, tilt your head, lift your chin, roll all the way over to the opposite side. So left ear to left shoulder, and then lower the chin and roll around again. Right ear to right shoulder, lift your chin, roll all the way across the back, left ear to left shoulder, lower the chin. We'll do one more time, right ear to right shoulder. Lift your chin, roll all the way over to the other side, and then when the chin reaches down to the sternum, relax. Draw the shoulder blades down the back, and we'll reverse. Left ear to left shoulder, lift your chin and roll all the way across to the right ear, right side, lower the chin, roll again, left ear to left shoulder, lift your chin, roll all the way across, right ear to right shoulder, Last one, left ear to left shoulder, lift your chin, roll all the way across, right ear to right shoulder, and then lower the chin. Nod your head no again, and just be aware of those physical sensations. Lift your chin up, bring your fingertips to your shoulders, and we're gonna bring our elbows together, if you can, almost like you're trying to get them to kiss. If they don't get there, that's okay, but lift the elbows up. Expand behind, nice big shoulder rolls, bring them down and then together again. Lift them up, bring them out and around, come together, and we'll do one more time. Lift them up and back and roll them around, and then bring them in together. And now we're gonna go reverse, so bring them back, Lift them up and then bring them forward and around. Again, bring them back, lift them up, bring them.
them forward, see if you can get them to kiss, and then around, and then last time. Don't worry if they don't touch, just drawing the elbows to touch. Feel that opening the trapezius in the back, and then release. Bring your fingertips down by your sides. And now, easy pose, Sukhasana. Look down, whatever foot is in front, switch. Extend your legs, go the other way. And this may not feel quite as easy, but this is really helpful to find balance between effort and ease in your body by creating patterns. We, we tend to go to a pattern again and again. When we repeat the same pattern, we may create imbalances. So it's helpful to try something different. And notice now how easy pose feels compared to before. Maybe not so easy. We're going to do some side bends here. So put your fingertips of one hand on the floor. You're going to take the opposite arm up and over and stretch. As you stretch, keep your hips grounded. I want you to imagine you're grabbing a ring, and we're going to pull it back with a nice bicep curl. So nice and strong with the bicep curl. Come up, and then repeat. Go all the way over to the side, stretch and reach. Bicep curl all the way up with a nice tight elbow squeeze. Last one, we're going to hold. So when you come over this time, we'll stay here. But try to remember to keep your heart open, shoulders open, not leaning forward, okay? So lift up, press into the palm of your hand so your spine is long, but you're still in a nice side bend and stretch. And now I invite you to breathe very deep here into the bowl of your belly and expand your side waist with the breath. Exhale out. And we'll do that one more time. See if you can create more space, okay? So breathe deep. And then as you exhale, come on all the way up. Come to that upright position. Observe. Notice what the sensations are from your right side to your left or any shift. Let's do the opposite arm now. Bring that other arm up. Lean over. Stretch and reach. Reach. And then bicep curl nice and tight. Really bring it up with a nice squeeze through the bicep. And then lean over, stretch and reach as far as you can go. So you're really stretching out of the side waist and then bring it up nice and tight. Last time, hold. Again, as you hold, try not to collapse into that shoulder. Feel the front of the body stay open. Open up that heart and breathe. So find that deep breath. Breathe into the side ribs. Expand, if you can, through the breath. Exhale out. We'll do that one more time. Nice big deep breath. Breathe into your rib cage so you feel a horizontal expansion across your chest. And then as you exhale, slowly come up. This time, interlace your fingers behind your back. And if you can, interlace. If you can't, grab them that way. Just grab the back of your shirt. If there's any impediment for you to clasp hands, you can just bring your arms behind you. Extend them behind you. Sit up nice and tall. And then lean forward into forward fold. So for some of you, this might be really not an easy, it should, may not feel so easy on the back. If this is a problem for your back, then don't lean so far forward. As you can lift the arms away from your back and shoulders, go for that nice stretch. Take one more breath. Release your hands to the floor in front of you now, and maybe walk forward a little bit more, lengthening your spine, lifting your heart, looking forward and up. And then exhale, walk back. We'll shake out the legs, give them a good shake. And then we're going to come on to all fours. We'll do just a little bit more stretching for the lower body now. So as you come onto all fours, we're going to find our way where your hands are spread nice and wide underneath, and your knees are underneath your heels. So find your balance between all four, your knees and your hands. And we're going to do a couple cat and cows. So the typical cat and cow is where you're going to lift your tailbone. Soften your belly, lift your collarbone, and look forward. And then as you exhale, you're going to leave with your tailbone, round the back, press your heart and navel up towards the ceiling, drop the crown of your head to the floor. 
Now, if you'd like to make this the sliding cat and cow, you're going to bend your elbows, keep your elbows in towards your midline, look forward and up and sort of lift up and through as you glide up, and then you're going to bend your elbows and round back. So I call this the sliding glide. You can try this. When you bend your elbows, keep your elbows towards your midline. It's sort of like you're trying to come into a half push up, and then you're going to push back and round your back up. Let's try that a few more times. Bend your elbows. Keep the elbows squeezed into your midline as you come up into your cow. And bend your elbows and round the back and then press up into your cat. Let's do that again one more time. Bend your elbows. Keep your elbows hugging into your, towards your midline. And then bend your elbows as you move back into your cat. From here, extend your right leg back behind you. Gently press through the ball of your foot back and forth, waking up the muscles in the back of your hips and legs. Keep your shoulder blades down your back for support. And then when you're ready, lift the right leg up. That's an inhale. On your exhale, knee to navel or knee to nose, round and squeeze in and up. Inhale, extend it out. Now on your next exhale, open the knee out to the side and bring it up towards your shoulder. Don't worry if you don't touch the shoulder, that's okay. That's the pattern. So inhale, extend it out, keep your hips squared, toes point to the floor. Exhale, knee to nose, round the back, squeeze it in and up. Inhale, go long, and now you're gonna open up the hip. It's an external rotation. Bend your knee and bring your knee up towards your shoulders as high as you can get it, and then go back, square your hip to the floor, exhale, bring your knee to nose, inhale, go long, nice and long, open that hip, bend the knee, and then try to bring it up towards that shoulder. Go long and now, and lower down. Let's stretch your wrists out, come off your hands for a second, shake them out, rub your palms together, just to bring heat and energy into those joints, and we'll do the other side now. Palms again underneath your shoulders, shoulder blades down the back. Bring your left foot behind you and start just gentle pulsing. Keeping those shoulder blades down the back, pulsing that back foot, awakening the back of the toes. And then gently lifting the left leg up, spread your toes. Feel length now in your back body. This is your inhale. On your exhale, knee to nose, round the backs as you scoop and bring your knee in. Inhale, go long, extend that leg. Now open the leg out to the side, bend that left knee and bring it up towards your shoulder. Repeat, go long, square your hip, toes towards the floor. Exhale, knee to nose, squeeze in and up, nice and tight. Inhale, go long, open the hip, bend the knee and feel it. Bring it up towards your shoulder. We'll do one more set. Inhale, go long. Exhale, knee to nose, squeeze in and up. Inhale, go long. Open up that hip, out to the side. Bend your knee and bring it up to tap. Release now your left leg to the floor. You can come up onto your shins. Rub your palms together. Shake them out. Come back to all fours. You're going to just open up the hips a little bit more. You're going to extend your right leg out behind you, lift it up, sweep your leg out to the side. Now this extension is going to open that hip a little bit more. Now point your toe, bring it behind you, cross it over the back leg and look over the opposite shoulder. So we're going to do that two more rounds. So inhale, sweep that leg out to the side. You can look over your shoulder to look towards the foot and then sweep it behind you, point your toe, bring it across the back leg, look over the opposite side. Let's do that one more time, bring it out, look over the shoulder, point the toe, sweep it behind, and look over your shoulder. And then slowly come back to all fours. We'll do the opposite side now, extend your left leg, point your toe and sweep it out to the side, look over that shoulder, as you point the toe, sweep it behind you, cross the leg, 
and look over that opposite side. So we're getting side bending stretches here as well. So again, sweep the leg out to the side, look over your shoulder, then sweep it behind you, cross over, and look behind you. We'll do one more. Lift that leg as high as you can as you sweep it out to the side. Slowly point your toe, bring it behind, and look over that shoulder. See how high you can keep it lifted? And then come back to center. We're gonna come on to we come off, shake your hands, shake it out, open and close. We'll do one more hip stretch on the knees, and then we're gonna come up to stand. I invite you now to step your right foot forward. We're in that kneeling lunge. Feel that stretch in your hips. Press the pelvis forward, and then you're gonna shift the hips back. So I'm gonna do a little hamstring stretch here. Flex your toes if you can. We'll move back and forth two more times. Use your hands to walk along as you bend your knee. Make sure knees and toes are in alignment. It's a very key point throughout your practice. Always make sure that you're pointing your knees and your, your toes and knees are always going in that same direction line. Shift your hips back. Stretch out that hamstring. If you're still feeling a lot of tightness here, maybe give a little massage just to bring the flow of blood into the back of the leg. We'll do one more time forward. As you come forward here, press into that foot. Open up through the hips. Look forward in your gaze. Pause here for a moment. Notice what you're feeling. Where's your sensations now? It's a beautiful stretch. Where are you noticing ease and where are you noticing disease or tightness or tension? Breathe into that space. Bring your attention to that area to create more ease and comfort. And then as you slowly shift that back, slide your right leg back and then step your left foot forward. As you step your left foot forward, make sure knees and toes are in alignment. You're gonna press the pelvis forward, feel that stretch in the hips. This opens up a muscle called your psoas. As you exhale, you're gonna shift back with the hamstring stretch. And again, if you can lift your toes, that makes it a little, little bit more intense. This may be too intense, so keep your knee bent. We'll shift forward again, bend the knee. As you bend the knee, you're pressing your pelvis to the floor. But be mindful that you're not dropping all your weight into that muscle. I want you to have a lot of tone in your core here. Make sure you feel connected to your core, that you're not dumping all your weight into that hip or your pelvis. There's control there. There's tone. So much so that if you had to come off your fingers right now, there's tone. You're not putting a lot of weight into your fingers either. Shift your hips back again. Massage the muscle if it needs a massage. Come forward one last time. As you come forward, let your gaze go forward. See if you can come, even come off those fingertips as you engage your core here. And then lower your fingertips to the floor. Tuck the toes of the back foot. Lift that back knee up. Step your left foot back to meet your right. Now we're in our downward dog. Draw your shoulder blades down the back. Shake your head no. Shake your head yes. Draw the shoulder blades down the back. Keep your neck long. Feel the connection. Keep your knees soft. You don't want to lock out your knees, but you want to feel that connection of that line going down the back body from your hips all the way down to your heels. Slowly bend your knees and walk your feet up toward your hands. As you make your way to the front of your mat, let your feet be about hip width distance apart. And come into that forward fold by maybe grabbing onto your forearms and just letting your head and your spine go into a really deep inversion here. Shake your head no. And shake your head yes. And may take your time now, release. We're gonna slowly come up. So bend your knees when you come up. 
and then lift up. As you lift up, let's sweep the arms out wide. Bring the palms overhead and maybe look up. Gently draw the thumbs to your third eye as you bring the hands down and just take a moment acknowledging your place of truth and light to your lips and throat where you speak kind words to yourself and to others. And then bring your hands to the front of your heart, acknowledging this place of your divine truth. And always remember to be true to yourself. Let your hands come down by your sides. So we're going to begin. I'm just going to take a sip of water. So if anyone wants to take a quick water break, go right ahead before we start our next sequence. So as I said, we're going to be moving in, in a, a series of poses. And in, for instructional purpose, purposes, this facing the couch will be my front of the mat. And then facing the bookcase will be my back. So when you hear me giving directions that way, move in a way that makes total sense for you. And if you get confused, don't worry. Just pick it up wherever you are. If I get confused, don't worry. We'll just do the best we can. All right. So we're going to start the pose with chair pose. I'm going to break down the next, it's a series of about 16 postures that we're going to take in a flow one way. Then we're going to do it with the opposite leg. And then we're going to do it again, just to learn it. Then I'm going to do the same flow backwards. I'm going to reverse it. And then I'm going to see if we can all put it together. So let's see how we do, okay? I, I, I think we got this, okay? So we're gonna start with chair pose. So remember in chair pose, find your seat, shift your hips way back, all right? Find your connection to the core. Remember that little zipper, so I really engage, want you to engage into that core. And then your arms can be either parallel, or if you choose to, to bring your arms all the way up. I, again, I want you to make this your practice and take the chair pose in a way that feels really suited for you in this moment. So we are going to start in chair. This will be our inhale. On our exhale, we're going to lower the hands to the ground, knees bent. We're going to step back into downward dog. So step your both feet back into your downward dog. In your downward dog, just remember to keep your shoulder blades down that back. Feel that connection in the, that the shoulder heads are really engaged for support. From our downward dog, we're going to come forward to plank. So you're going to shift your weight forward. Now for some of you, this may be best to keep your knees on the floor. If you choose to do that, dropping your knees to your floor is totally fine. If you're going to stay in plank, keep your knees lifted. From our plank pose, we're going to go to side plank. So in this case, if you're going to take a modified pose, you can drop the knee, left knee comes down, you're going to come up into side plank here. That's a variation. For those of you who want to do full side plank, twist your heels to your left. Come back to side plank. Everyone meets back into plank or your variation. And now you step your right foot forward. And we're going to come up into a high lunge. So right foot forward, left foot back. Your knees, hips, and shoulders are facing the short edge of your mat, and you can add your arms. High lunge. Really check your alignment. Make sure you can see your toes over your right foot. Your knee should still be over your ankle. Lift your heart, lift your gaze, and feel the strength of this posture. High lunge. From high lunge, we're going to point our toes to the left. We'll take what we call the five-pointed star. So as you point your toes to the left, your arms and legs are expanded like a five-pointed star. My back is to you right now. I don't know if you can see me from where you are. But from a five-pointed star, bring your hands to your heart and bend your knees as you come into what we call the temple pose. So now you're in a gentle squat. Make sure you're pushing your 
your outer thighs towards the pinky edge of your feet, okay? So your, that your thighs are strong, your knees are bent, you're in a squat. We're going to change direction to the back of your mat. So left, point your toes to the left, your left foot is forward, your right foot is back, and you're back in a high lunge now, facing the other direction. So I'm facing what I'm calling the bookcase, which is the back end of my mat. Feel the strength of this lunge. From this lunge, bring your hands to your heart. Place your thumbs in your sternum. Now this is an option here. We're gonna move into warrior three, but if you choose to, you do not have to lift the back foot off the ground. Begin to hinge at your waist. Step your weight forward onto that left leg. And if you choose to lift the back foot up off the mat. Find your balance. Lower the back foot. Come back to that lunge. From lunge, we're going to move to warrior two. So spin the heel of your right foot onto the mat. Open your shoulders and arms to the long edge of your mat. So, but your gaze is over the middle finger of your left hand facing that left foot. Warrior two. Really feel the body get long across your shoulders. Feel the strength in your legs as you really ground into your feet. Lift up through the crown of your head and focus on the strength of this posture. As you inhale now, we're gonna move back into a squat, facing the long edge of your mat. So squat. We're gonna move back into the five-pointed star, then back into a high lunge. Facing the front of your mat, right foot forward, we're going to move our hands to our heart. We're going to add a twist. Now, here's a couple variations on a twist, depending on what feels right in your back today. Maybe just bring your left hand to the right leg and your right hand to your hip. You can twist here. That's one variation. For those of you who prefer a deeper twist, bring your hands to your heart and bring your elbow to that knee. Your gazing point now is down. I want you to look down at that right foot. As you look down at that right foot, you're going to transfer the weight into the right leg and step your back foot up to meet your front. Inhale here. As you exhale, you're going to come up into your chair pose. Rise tall. Inhale. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. So that completes that circuit on that side. We're going to repeat the same poses, but we're going to be using the opposite leg to, as our focal point. So let's start in chair. Find your chair. Inhale. Remember, connect to your core. Zip that zipper up. Feel the tone in the low back. And now when you exhale, place your palms on the floor, fingers on the floor, and step back into your downward dog. Draw those shoulders down the back. Feel the shoulder heads really settle in. Create length and find your breath. If you know the Ujjayi breathing, a nice deep inhale and exhale, observe your breath. On your next inhale, we'll move through plank. So, Roll the shoulders forward over the wrists so you're a nice, strong body here. Nice, strong plank. Now you can, we're going to move from a plank to side plank. Now the opposite side. So if you're going to modify it, drop your right knee. Lift your left hand up. That's the modify. If you're going into full plank, spin your heels to the right. Your right hand is down. Left hand is up. Side plank. Stay strong through the shoulders. Inhale. 
Now when you exhale, come back to plank, and now step your left foot front. We're going to come up, adjust your back foot as necessary, come up into a high lunge. Draw your shoulder blades down the back, lift your heart, lift your sternum, and again, your arms can be parallel. Some of you might like to place your palms to touch. That's a nice variation on the arm. Some of you might even like to do the temple mudra where you interlace the three fingers and your index finger is pointing upwards. So these are choices. These are variations you can add. Make this your practice. From high lunge, we open to the five-pointed star. Point your toes to the right. Heels in, toes out, arms wide. So in five-pointed star, you can choose to stay here or you can choose to squat. If you squat, bend your knees, hands to heart. In the squat, you want to actively bring your thighs, your outer thighs, rolling towards the pinky edge of your foot. So the knees are not collapsing in, they're opening out. Draw down through that squat, thumbs to your heart, shoulders over your hips. That really fires up the pelvis, the hips, the thighs, get grounded through your feet. Very strong posture, temple pose. From temple pose, spin your toes to the right. Your right foot is forward, left foot back, and you're going to come back to that high lunge. Take whatever variation in your arms you choose. From high lunge, bring your hands to your heart. Warrior three variation. So shift your weight onto the right leg. Hinge from your hips and choose the balance or not. You can keep the toe on the ground and just lean forward through the back of the neck and spine. Slowly lower the foot if it's lifted. Bring your hands up through the lunge pose. From lunge, we move into warrior two. So spin the heel of the left foot on the floor. Your shoulders and hips open towards the long edge of your mat. Your right foot is forward. Right knee is bent. Warrior two. Gaze over the middle finger of your right hand. Feel the strength of this posture. Really reach out, root down through your feet. Take another breath here, then point your toes towards the left, come back to that squat pose. From squat pose, come back to your five-pointed star, we're going to come into a high lunge, facing the front of the mat, so your left foot is forward, right foot back, we're going to take Hands to your heart and take the variation of a twist. So modify twist, bring your right hand to your left knee, bring your left hand to your left hip, and look over your left shoulder. If you're choosing a deeper variation, hands to heart, bring your right elbow to your left knee, spin the spine over your left shoulder. Find your breath. Find your gaze. Lower your gaze to your left foot now. Look down at your left big toe. Transfer your weight onto the left leg as you step your right foot up to meet your left. As you're in this twist, shift that right hip back. As you inhale now, come up through chair. Stand tall. Palms to touch. Hands to heart. hands down by your sides. All right, we've completed one round. Now I took that nice and slow so that everyone really could work well with that. We're going to do that now with a little bit more movement, okay? And I won't hold it for as long, so I really want everyone to pay attention and move in a way that feels safe in your body. It won't be fast, but we're not going to hold each pose as long but I want you to move with intention. All right, so we'll start facing the front of your mat. 
Come to your chair pose. Find your breath. Inhale. Now as you exhale, bring your fingertips to the floor, fold forward. Step back into your downward dog. From your downward dog, we'll move into plank. Shoulders over the wrists. Take your variation of a side plank. So spin your heels to the left or lower your left knee and extend your right arm up to the sky. From side plank, move back to your plank. And then step your right foot forward and lift to stand. Adjust your back foot as needed to step up into your high lunge. Again, soften your shoulders, lift your heart, open up your throat, lift up your gaze. From a high lunge, spin your toes to the left. Take that five-pointed pose, spread out wide. Bring your hands to your heart as you exhale into, come into that temple squat. Shoulders over the hips. Press those outer thighs towards the pinky edges of your feet. On your next inhale, you're gonna point your toes to the left, lift your arms forward and up as you spin into your high lunge. Soften your shoulders down the back, lift your sternum, open up your heart, maybe lift your gaze up. From an exhale now, bring your thumbs and hands to your heart. Your variation of warrior three, so take whatever you need, shift your weight over the left leg. If you're going to balance, lift the back foot up. Lower the back foot, lift the arms up through high lunge. From high lunge, spin the heel of the right foot flat on the floor and open up into your warrior two variation. Find your breath. From warrior two, make your way back, spin your toes to the right, come into that temple squat, hands to heart. From temple squat, straighten your legs, straighten your arms, five-pointed star, point your toes to the front edge of your mat, come into high lunge. We're going to add the twist, hands to heart, or take the variation, left elbow to right knee. Lunge with a twist. Now look down at the right foot. Transfer the weight into the right leg as you step the back foot forward. Now you're in chair with a twist. Then we're going to open up to chair. Inhale, lift. Palms to touch. Exhale, right back into chair. Now we're going to go right into the other side. Inhale here. On your exhale, fingertips down to the floor, bow your head and step back into your downward dog. We'll do the other side. Connect in your downward dog. Draw those shoulder blades down the back. Feel the strong connection in your shoulders so that you can now inhale and come through plank. Very supportive. We're going to do a side plank. So your right hand is down. You're gonna drop your right knee, spin your heels to the right and lift your left arm up, side plank. Inhale, exhale back to plank, and now step your left foot forward, right foot back. We're gonna lift up to high lunge. High lunge, spin your toes to the right, five-pointed star, nice big open legs. Bring your hands to your heart, bend your knees to take the temple squat. Again, really press the outer thighs out towards the outer edges of your feet. Get grounded here. This is a beautiful pose. Opens up those hips. Take a breath. Spin over to the right. Right foot forward, left foot back, high lunge. 
From high lunge, bring your hands to your heart. You're going to want to take your variation of warrior three now. So you can keep your foot on the ground or transfer the weight onto the right leg and lift the back foot off the ground for balance. Lower the back foot as you come up through a lunge. From this lunge, spin the heel of the back foot ground to come into warrior two. Right knee is bent, gaze is over the right hand. Feel the strength of your warrior. Bring your attention back to your intention at the beginning of this practice. Bring your hands to your heart. Squat. Come back to the front of your mat. High lunge. We'll add the twist. Hands to your heart. Look down at your foot. Step your back foot forward. Inhale up to chair. Come all the way up. Palms to touch. Exhale, hands to heart. Release. Great. All right, we did it. So now I'm going to reverse it. All right. Ready for a little bit of a challenge on reverse. So the one thing we can say is we always start in chair pose, okay? So that's the one constant. So we're gonna start in chair pose, come to chair. So now we're gonna go right into hands to heart, chair with the twist. You're gonna come bring your left elbow to your right knee. Look down at the right foot. Keep the weight on your right leg Transfer the left foot, step it behind into twist with a lunge. We're going to inhale up to high lunge. Lift your arms up to high lunge. From high lunge, we're going to come into spin your toes to your left, five pointed star. Five pointed star, hands to heart. From here, we're going to come into warrior two. So spin the left foot back. Left arm gazes over the left hand. Inhale here, come into high lunge. Sweep, come on the ball of the right foot. So your toes are pointing to the back of the mat. Bring your hands to your heart. Now your variation of warrior three here. So transfer the weight onto the left foot as you lift the back foot off the ground. Step back, high lunge. From high lunge to temple. From temple to the five pointed star. Oops, did I do that one? Okay, five pointed star. Okay, sorry. From five pointed star, we're going to come back to our lunge facing the front of the mat. From here, come back to your plank pose. Going to keep the left arm down, spin the heels to the left, and lift your right arm up, side plank. From side plank back to plank. From plank back to your downward dog. From your downward dog, look forward, walk up to the front of your mat. Inhale up to chair. Come all the way up, inhale. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart. We'll do the other side now. Come back to chair. So we always start at chair. Exhale, hands to heart with a twist. So now you're going to twist to your left. Bring your right elbow to your left knee. Looking down at your left foot. Keep the weight on your left leg. Lift the heel of your right foot and step your right foot back. So we're in twist 
with a lunge. We're going to inhale up to high lunge, left foot forward, right foot back. Exhale into five pointed star, back to goddess, I'm sorry, temple squat. From temple squat, we're going to go into warrior two. So spin the right foot to the back of your mat, bend your right knee, extend your arms, and your gaze is over the right hand. Again, get grounded. Feel the strength of this posture. As we inhale, spin your toes to the back edge and come up into a high lunge. Bring your hands to your heart. Your variation of warrior three. On your right leg, you're standing on the right leg, lifting the back leg up, lowering the back foot, come through your high lunge. Back to your temple squat. Back to the five-pointed star. Face the front of your mat in a high lunge. From here, we're going to transfer down into plank to side plank. So now, you're, spin your heels to the left. Your left arm is down and your right arm is up. Meet back in plank. And then back to downward dog. Draw those shoulder heads down the back. Bend your knees, look forward. And walk up to the front of your mat. Inhale up to chair. Inhale all the way up to stand. Exhale, bring the thumbs back to your third eye. Honor the light within. Bring them to your lips. Bring them to your heart. Let your hands come down by your sides. Just observe. Observe your movements. Observe the sensations of the asana. We just completed our, our reverse, flip in reverse. We'll take a nice big inhale, sweep your arms all the way out and up, palms to touch. As you exhale, let's just fold all the way forward, fingertips down to the crown, bow your head. Inhale, come all the way up again. Exhale, bring your hands back right down through the center and pause. No judgment. Just notice the physical sensations of your asana practice today. Release your hands down by your sides. And now we're going to come onto our mat and finish with a stretch before we move into relaxation. So come seated, if you would. We're going to spin your toes to meet the front of your mat and bend your knees as we, we're going to stretch Final stretches on our back in constructive rest pose. So I invite you to come onto your spine. Draw the shoulder blades underneath your back. Find the four corners of your body, the right shoulder, your left shoulder, the right hip, and the left hip. Gently guide your right knee into your chest and extend your left leg out. As you hug your right knee in, give it a nice squeeze. This releases low back. And point and flex your feet for three, two, and one. Let's circle the ankles for three, two, and one. And circle the other way, please, for three, two, and one. Let's extend the right leg up. Give it a nice stretch. If you'd like to, just massage the back of the leg. Just an appreciation for all of your legs just did in this practice. For those of you who wanted final long stretch, maybe clasp the back of your thigh, the back of your calf, your ankle, or all the way up to your toes. 
Nice hamstring stretch. Inhale. On your exhale, maybe even look, bring your chest up towards your shin or your forehead up towards your knee. Gently lower your head. Bend that right knee. Bring your left knee into your chest. Give yourself a hug and then relax the right leg out and begin to point and flex the opposite foot. So three, two, and one. And then circle, please, for three, two, and one. And circle the other way. Three, two, and one. Hug that knee in. Release that lower back. Extend that leg up, gently massage if you choose to, or go for that final stretch, whatever it is you need. Gently guide your chest or forehead up towards the knee or the shin. Take a breath. And then when you exhale, bend that knee again. Perhaps bring both knees into the chest for a final gentle rock from side to side. And then extend your legs all the way out. I like to windshield wiper my feet from side to side just to release the hips, release the pelvis, release the joints of your ankles, shake out your feet, bring your arms down by your sides, and take your final pose for relaxation. And again, as this is your practice, I will invite you to take whatever feels appropriate for you for the final three or four minutes of relaxation. And again, if you choose to stay longer in relaxation, go right ahead. You don't have to come and sit up and close with me. If you choose to, you can just enjoy your final, final pose. So as you begin to settle, become aware of your surroundings. Become aware of the physical body resting. Notice the places where your body's resting your head, your shoulders, your spine, your arms, and your legs, and let your body yield into gravity by softening, releasing, letting yourself settle, softening now your thoughts, settling your thoughts, settling your breath. Take the next two or three minutes to settle in your own body with your own breath in silence. Mind wanders, just keep coming back to that sensation of the breath. 30 more seconds, just breathe in silence. Now, if you choose to, you'll very gently, very slowly guide your attention back into the physical body by moving your fingers and toes. Perhaps begin to breathe a little bit deeper. And listening to your own signals and your own body moving in a way that feels intelligent to you right now. So whether that's to gather your knees into your chest or whether it's to take a long body stretch, Take whatever feels appropriate. And when you're ready, gently push yourself up into a seated position.
And as we come now to the conclusion of our practice today, I'll invite you to pause, perhaps bow your head, maybe bring your hands to your heart, and find a place within that feels something like gratitude. <clears throat> and from that place of gratitude, I invite you to consider one blessing today that you're grateful for. And I'm grateful for all of you for allowing me the honor to lead today's practice. <clears throat> 